<clears throat> All right. So we did, so Joe and I just got done listening to Sound and Fury in its entirety. We, we've heard it before, Again. of course. Yeah, and we saw it live. So just, uh, what do you think, man? Well, to compare from like the concert to the album, it's funny. I I, I I've already picked out like favorite songs, mm-hmm. you know. And then there's other songs, and I'm just like, eh, it's okay. But it's all it's all impressive. The whole thing is impressive. What he did. Yeah. I wish this would have gotten more critical acclaim because his last his last record did. It was like the mm-hmm. country oh. album of the year. Uh, uh, Sailor's Guide. Yeah. Yeah, one Grammys and shit. Yeah. So I was I hoping this would get the same kind of acclaim, but it didn't. It I don't did really, not. I don't really put too much stock anymore into the Grammys and into um, critically acclaimed. Yeah. Uh, stuff anymore. That's it's, a good point. It's all a, a money making. You know what I mean? Good yeah. music is good music, no matter if right. it's critically acclaimed or not. Yeah. Yeah, this is just uh, – I love it so much. I wish – we saw it live in Pittsburgh. He played a great show. It was amazing. I wish he would have played the album in order. We were the first show that they did not yeah. play the album in order. They just played a set where they were mixed in, which is which is what a normal artist would do, by the way. But, it's you it, know. It was, it was bittersweet to me because it started off with um, uh, The Best Clockmaker on Mars. Yeah. Which is my favorite yeah. song on the album. So I'm I'm not gonna be like oh this that that sucks right so I was very bittersweet but you know yeah it was but all in all it was it was a great it was probably one of the best if not the best concert I've ever, I've ever been to yeah no I, no I definitely like have you it. ever been I was thinking about this have you ever been to an actual like rock concert like that before where the guitars just like melt your face off no that's why I, I felt I found it overwhelming a little bit yeah me too. it was like tough to keep up with because when you get into those guitar solos. When you're live, it's so loud. Like, you're just into the whole show. It's, yeah, dude. And every I, goddamn song. I don't it. know if it was the, maybe the venue we were at. Maybe it wasn't built for concerts or something. Maybe because we were so high up. Maybe there was some type of echo or something. But it seemed really loud. I it mean, was. Which, which a rock concert should be loud. But I don't know. It well, always got too annoying at some point. Well, okay. I mean, consider this. So, I chose the Pittsburgh show because the arena was a lot smaller. I'm like, right. okay, well, we'll be, all, we'll be a lot closer. But so it's got to be difficult to change the sound. Like, like mm. they of course it's postponed due to the COVD. Oh, really? COVID nineteen. I'm guessing all concerts are. Yeah. Postponed. Well, so I was thinking like, I'll, I'll I'll try to go see him again because he's gonna play. They rescheduled it for May 25th, but who knows if that's gonna happen? That's not you know whatever. Mm. So anyway. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's got to be tough for them to calibrate this sound like. Sure. You know, they're going to play the same show in Columbus. Maybe it'll be perfect in Columbus yeah. in a bigger arena. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our, our, uh, venues make a, a big difference when it comes to live music. Yeah. It, and it really does. I mean, imagine listening to a band in your high school auditorium or your high school gym and then listening to a band at Blossom or, or, or the, the you know, some crazy Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember Tim and I were at a we went to we saw Will Hogan uh Indianapolis, Indiana of all places. And uh wow, where did he play? He played at the Rathskeller and it's like you know, it's like a place for wedding halls. Like a oh, okay. it's a wedding venue, you know. So yeah. it had a real low ceiling and we were real close to the stage right by the speaker and it was and it was so loud like we thought we were going to pass out. Jesus. It was the kind of thing like it, like I'm thinking, like, all right, if he can stand it, I can stand it. And then he had the same thing. So when we got out, we're like, oh my god, we were both thinking the same thing. Like I was about to get out of there, you know, but we didn't want to give in to the. Yeah, there, there's a place in Columbus called, called the Basement. Yeah, and that that place can get really loud too. Yep. Yeah, for sure. But that yeah, that was but because we were in Indianapolis. Like we drove back to Columbus that night, so we're like, sc- I'm sure screaming at each other in the car ride home, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I as far as this record's concerned, I we talked about it. I remember listening to it the, for the first time. You know, I when they first started releasing like uh they released like a video for it or like a hint of a video for it, a teaser. Yeah. I remember thinking like is that did they just pick some random music, or is that really the music from the record? Because it sounded so weird, like uh, from Sing Along. It was mm-hmm. like, whatever, like the, the synth part of that song. It, and it was like, hmm. 
I don't know. It just it didn't sounded so just foreign. Off off putting. Like, yeah, like I just didn't. I really just didn't. I'm like, did Sergio? Is that his music or? Hmm. But yeah, but that was the first single they released, and I was a huge fan when it came out. So. Yeah, I remember, I, yeah, I remember when it came out. I was and out. Yeah, it definitely was. Just more, just looking forward to him just releasing another record after mm-hmm. the last two that he were amazing. You know, Sailor's Guide and and Metro Minus Sons are are great records. So, how is he gonna? That was my whole interest. It's like, okay, well, how is he gonna follow that up? Yeah, because you could see him continue to evolve through his first album, which is like a country record. His second album is like is country, but I don't really know how to explain it. But it's not country. No, nah, it no, nah, it is. He like he he maintained like he did like Life of Sin which on I that love. record. A great song, hard ass country song. Like so, he maintained that root, but like he still it's like outlaw country. Yeah, he started to venture into more psychedelic territory. Mm-hmm. And the whole space theme, metamodern sounds in country music. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, that's what I tell people. Like, when I tell people about Sterles or Simpson, they, they say, well, what kind of music does he play? I, I, I just say he, he does psychedelic country. Yeah. Outlaw country. Psychedelic outlaw country is what I would say. The It's funny. The uh, Daniel Donato, the guitar player who played with the Wild Feathers for a minute, who like I listened to a little bit? Who's trying to do his own thing? He calls it cosmic country. I like what, it. Yeah, what he's I like playing. It. You know, I like it. So I feel like that's kind of the kind of the same thing. But but you know, so he did that. But then this is obviously just totally to ten to twelve. Yeah, he, he just cranks it up with this yeah. one. Yeah, the whole production is just cranked up. Yeah, I love it. Like I said, fastest horse takes me a minute. It's really harsh on the ears, like. But they end up bringing it together by the end. Like, mm-hmm. they're fucking jamming on that. I mean, they are the whole time, it I guess. It gets to a really good groove. Like, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah, definitely it chaos at first. It all kind of yeah. comes together. And then you're trying to focus on the lyrics. Okay, like, what is he saying through all these <laughs> guitars? Yeah, yeah, it's great, yeah. Yeah, and then you get into a really good groove. And that, that the synth comes back at the end. Yeah. Yeah, it's tied it all together. It sounds very sim. It's through the whole record. It, it sounds very similar to um, the one on "Remember to Breathe," to me. So mm-hmm. it sort of does the same thing. I don't know. Yeah, like that anime that um, uh, you know, n- ninja, not ninja, a uh, samurai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, kind of, kind of sound. If you watch those old like samurai movies. Yeah, which is apparently the old, what they were the watching. Old, or the old like kung fu movies or something like that, like some Bruce Lee shit. Yeah, that's apparently the kind of shit they had on while they were recording the record. Oh really? So they had it up. Yeah. Those are great. Do you ever you ever go back and watch any of those like Enter the Fist or anything like those Bruce Lee movies? No, you, you know, should. Well, you should. every time I listen I listen to Wu Tang Clan, like well, I'm like, oh go. man, like I need to watch this shit. It sounds I hilarious. I want to say it was <laughs> Vanity Fair or someone talked to one of the members of the Wu Tang Clan, and they went through and they they picked out all the movies that they sampled from and they showed scenes from the movie and like the titles of the movie and like what they were uh-huh. it'd be great to do like a movie marathon like over a couple of days of just watching those movies yeah like, throughout the discography of how wu-tang presented them like on the album like track oh, okay. one is yeah, this yeah. sample so we'll watch that movie first sure and then go through like that yeah yeah it'd probably, it would take a while because they use a lot of samples yeah but those those movies are fun though Oh, it it sounds so funny. Bruce I'm like, Lee versus Chuck Norris. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the one. <laughs> Lou Al Sindor. If what if what you say is true, <laughs> <laughs> the Shaolin and the Wu Tang <laughs> could be dangerous. Yeah. Every time. Like Do that, you think your Wu Tang style can defeat me? Yeah. Every time I have it on the car, like <laughs> like that'll come on, and I start laughing. I love it. <laughs> that's that's like my favorite part about that album is this. Yeah. Well, and they they can all of them can, all of them are very skilled at rapping. Like they're they're very oh, sure, good yeah. at like what they do. Yeah. But the samples that adds to it and and you know the beat selection and the, the little skits and stuff, it's one of the best hip hop albums ever. Yeah. 
Enter the 36 Chamber. So good. First album, too. Oh, yeah. Came That's the one we listened to. Yeah, yeah. Fire. Yeah, well, hey, it's funny we bring up the Wu-Tang Clan because that was one of Sturgill's comments about this record is he wanted it to hit like a Wu-Tang record. Okay. That was one of his quotes, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's so, cool. I don't Perhaps know. he even knows who the Wu-Tang Clan even are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, isn't that funny? Like, you, you wonder, you know. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, he's 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 a musician, so I bet he probably knows way more musicians than we do. Sure, through, through across all genres, because he's 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 about that life. He's in that sure, he's yeah, in that, uh, that world. Yeah, so they probably know a lot. They're like savants on. Yeah, well, I mean, in, yeah, I mean, just gotta just by nature of what you do, you probably listen to the business. I mean, like, you know, I feel like I listen to a lot of music, but I mean, their lifestyle lends it to listening to me you know and you're right. on the road a lot like yeah what else are you gonna do listen to music yeah especially now i wonder how that's changed like well i guess they always could it was what, just different forms great, of what a great life they must have i mean i know it must be fr- be hard you know traveling and stuff like that so that's yeah. not easy flying and bus rides but you just get to play music and listen to music all day long D- yeah wouldn't that be great dude uh, and get paid for it yeah yeah that'd uh, be excellent and uh, yeah, when we saw the uh, the wild feathers, man, they looked like they just every time I see them, they look like they're having so much fun. You know what I mean? It's just That's so, awesome. you know, yeah. I mean, who knows? But it's just uh, it's cool. Like you could see, like they they still play at small enough venues where you know you could see them kind of like, oh, there's their backstage area, mm-hmm. you know, and like there's they're they're, they're all, they all have beers and shit, you know. And yeah. That like <laughs> the person comes out and like whoever like their state stage manager or whatever it is like sets up he, he like set out two of course lights at like the drums two of course lights where you know for all of them that's you know a, that's a part of his job right that's what he's got to do every night right <laughs> that's that's pretty cool though yeah but yeah so definitely i the sturgill simpson show was terrific i i loved it but i just i really well i guess i said it before i just i appreciate smaller venues now smaller shows more intimate shows for sure because you're closer to the action? Is that why? Yeah, 100%. No, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the concert we just went to, that Sturgill show, that might have been not the right place to be, is right up on the stage, you know, because that was crazy, you know. But uh, maybe that was the right place to be. I don't, I don't know. know. But, yeah, they, they were just different, I guess, you know. But And I just never, I've never been to a concert like that. That's the thing. That It offered of its own, yeah. Yeah. Like that very hard, like, rock kind of... Like something you would go see back in the 70s or something. Yeah, That's what it right. seemed like to me. Right, those... God, those lights. The fucking lights during that show, man. <laughs> so, it oh it was God. crazy how it just... It filled the whole place. So, like, just the way... watch it on the walls. And so, stuff the, the fact that, that the whole room was flashing on and off, on and off. Like, it was, whoa, you know, it's trippy yeah. in that way. Yeah, was, yeah. That was cool. And I was I was I was sleep deprived. Also, I was up. For oh like, yeah, <laughs> I was up that like whole day. I was up for like over twenty four hours. So I'm sleep deprived, and I'm watching this light show, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, uh-huh. and I'm thinking, I'm just it was just wild. Well, it was crazy too because the lights culminated with like crazy guitar parts. Oh, and the guitars were loud. So you're already into it, like you know, and like you got the lights. I was you got that overwhelming. You got that 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 stink face on where your face is like frozen in time. It's like yeah, it's you're almost sore after (laughs) because there were so many goddamn guitar solos that make you make a face like that. Yeah, you got stretch. Yeah, get up and stretch. So it was it was a great time. I uh, (laughs) I was happy. It's funny. I joked about it, but when I took the beer from those people, (laughs) oh yeah. (laughs) In hindsight now. <laughs> yeah, I know. With all the regulations. But I did have a very severe dry mouth at the time, so I would have I would do it even today. Yeah. I, I would I still share the beer. Dry mouth sucks. Yeah. I wanted to enjoy the rest of that show at whatever cost. Like when you're eating tortilla chips and <laughs> you know, that's the worst. And you got no water nearby or no beer nearby. <laughs> I had I thought about you the other day, my I had a. My mom got uh, pretzel rods nice. from someplace and gave them to me. So I had beer. Favorite. I had beer and pretzels, and I was like, "Isn't right. that a great? Isn't that a great snack?" Oh, it is. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I love. Not, I mean, this is kind of sad, but I love having getting beer and pretzels and watching baseball. Oh no, I think that's terrific. I, man. I mean, with you know, with the baseball season being 
you know. Oh, that's suspended okay. Well, right now. that's what's sad. Yeah. yeah. I love base- baseball. Baseball is my favorite sport. It'll always be my favorite sport. Do you think about what if you're what if you were a senior on a really on a really good college basketball team? No well, tournament. You're done. I think they're gonna. Um, I think the NCAA is gonna let those players like play again. Like have another senior season. Uh, wow, that's what I've been hearing. Um, you know, and, and if they want to uh, declare for a draft or something, they could. But but oh, if, okay. if that was going to be like their senior moment, I think they could. Somehow, oh well, that's pretty crazy too. Almost, it's almost like getting redshirted again. Yeah, but that's pretty crazy too because like they play, they did play most of the year, so they get a whole new year. Oh. I mean, it makes sense because that sucks not to have an NCAA tournament, which is what it's all about. And even kids that aren't in sports, like these kids that are in high school or these kids that are in. Um, like college that are in their senior year, like yeah. they don't. School's gonna be canceled all done. year. Don't get to see their buddies. No, it sucks. Yeah, and nobody knows what's going on. Nobody has the answers to this. You know what I mean? No. It's just kind of just there's day by day. There's, I mean, there's and there's smart people on it and all that, and they 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 can give us their best guess. But it's evolving every single day. Yeah, that's the thing. And we've never experienced something like this before i mean there was sars and h1n1 and and you know the swine yeah, but, and stuff but i remember that is, shit but nothing was different. like this where they were shutting everything down and the economy was crashing and and i'm thinking okay was it because i was too young and i didn't may, just notice what was going on going around around going around me yeah you know what i mean but i don't think everything nothing shut down even no. 9 11 school only shut right. down for like a, a day or two right yeah so yeah so i remember like 9 11 2008, 2009, like the housing crash. Okay. Like, I remember that. And then, th- th- so I remember H1N1. I do too, but I didn't. It wasn't that big but a deal. But I was almost like, it's kind of it's kind of bad to say now, but I, I remember when it, when swine flu was going around, I was, I was kind of like making fun of it because it, oh, sure. it was the swine flu. Well, we were all making fun of coronavirus before it was as serious as it is now. Now it's not as funny to joke yeah. about it, but like yeah, I guess. at the time, I mean, we were talking, we, we, we drank Corona last week, That's you true. know, <laughs> in honor of the thing. But, it, you know, it's it's changing so rapidly that when a week ago, it wasn't that bad yet. Now, you know, I mean, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah, and, and, like, we can't pull back from history. Like, oh, the, we can just learn from the coronavirus of 1972. You know, yeah, like, right, like, like, right. Like, Unprecedented, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's never been, like, written about or, like, it's it's just, like, a brand, it's like a brand new yeah. experience. It's like a social experience, a, a brand new social experience. That's why it's, like. It's if, weird, If you want to go real deep, it's, like, the whole, like, simulation thing like like we're in a simulation yeah it's like was this just like a button someone just pressed and like okay the world is going to deal with coronavirus now well and just see how <laughs> let's just see you know like if you're playing a video game like the sims or like uh you know how you can just well make, you can make changes yeah with the click of a button well i would say like the election of trump is kind of the first thing that's like well that's off the wall like he's the president you know and then so now yeah now they're just fucking around it seems like mm-hmm. i don't know I, I i wouldn't be i would not be surprised it does kind of feel like the uh, the end of the world, you know. A little bit, like 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 a pre like a precursor to it. Like I'm not like saying I'm not saying it is. It no, just feels that it's way. It's definitely not. You I know, mean, we'll we'll get better and yeah. It's just gonna take time. Yeah, but but also if it ends, I, I would not be surprised. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I think we'll be we'll be fine. We just gotta well, lay low for a little bit. Take precautions. I mean, people are saying this is an overreaction, but it's it's not because we, it, it can't be an overreaction because we don't know what's going to happen. Right. You know. So you might as well shoot high than than aim low, because if you aim low, you're going to have a whole bunch of deaths on your hand. Yeah. But if you aim high, then maybe you'll prevent a few hundred thousand whatever deaths. Yeah. So. And I'm not saying it's it's not killing everyone, but you know, especially like older, like the older people. No, it's it's and it sounds. It's like okay, well, the disease, yeah, yeah, but the economy, but seriously, like, I mean, there's a lot of like these. How long are these businesses gonna be shut down? Like, how can they? I don't know how can they sustain yeah. that. I mean, I'm so grateful that I work for a company that is still open. Yeah, me too. And it's still because I'm still getting paid. Me too. Yeah, right. You know, right. And I, I might not like my job, or whatever, but hey, around this time, I'm I'm grateful that I have a job. Right, right. 
Isn't it funny how things change? It, like so quick. A couple weeks back, you oh. you weren't as grateful Dude, about the on, paycheck. I just you know? came off a of vacation. Like I'm yeah. just like fuck. I just want to go back to vacation. Yeah, same. I know. And now I'm like, dang. I hope my, I hope I can still work. It's, yeah. It's, it's total 180. Yeah. Oh, good job. Good job. You could have fucked up and said 360, but you got it right. I've, I've, I've done it in the past, and I've learned from my mistakes. I've done that one. Somebody time. did that. Some NBA guy did total that. Total 360. 720. <laughs> yeah.